Hi everyone. Now we will discuss uh, break-even charts. We will discuss a uh, break-even chart and contribution break-even chart. So initially, I will discuss with respect to a single product, and then we will discuss about multiple products as well. Uh, in order to understand, first I will talk. I will discuss about uh, break-even chart. Okay, from CVP analysis, we will first be discussing about break-even chart and then we will discuss about contribution break-even chart. So in order to understand the break-even chart, we need to refer back to the uh, cost behavior where we discussed about semi-variable cost. So initially, the first half of the chart is much similar to the semi-variable cost and then we have to just add the amount of sales revenue in that chart. So it, it will become a break-even chart with respect to CVP analysis. Okay, so uh, I will be referring to the same example which I earlier discussed uh, uh, in our calculation uh, for single product. I've already covered profit volume chart also on the same example, which if you guys remember, we discussed that let's say a company has a selling price of $10, a variable cost of $7, and hence a contribution of $3, and it has a fixed cost of Nine thousand, and the budgeted sales were assumed to be five thousand units. Okay, so this is what we have already discussed, and we will draw our diagram based on the same assumption. So let's uh, first of all consider what we have. This will be the amount. And this will be the units. Okay. So we have sales on one side. You can have these sales either in terms of units or in terms of sales revenue. So because we have a maximum of 5,000 units. Okay. So let's say we have one, two, three, four, and 5,000 units i have already mentioned and i will keep on adding again and again you don't have to draw the diagram in the exam the diagram will be there you just have to interpret that diagram you have to maybe tell where is the break even point how much is the fixed cost how much is the total revenue how much is the profit how much is the loss okay so the amount of profitability we can have from this product, let's have a quick calculation as we did earlier as well. The total contribution generated will be 15,000 and a fixed cost is 9,000. So there will be a profit of 6,000, okay? Here we have the amount, okay? And this amount would represent our fixed cost. It will represent our variable cost. It will represent our total cost and the sales revenue as well, okay? So maximum amount of sales revenue that we are going to generate because the highest amount would be the sales revenue. So let's consider with respect to the sales revenue. So it's going to be 50,000. We have a selling price of $10. Uh, if each unit is sold at five, uh, $10, so 5,000 units will generate a sales revenue of 50,000, okay? <clears throat> So it means that the maximum amount we can have here would extend up to 50,000. So let's keep it in thousands and the amount in tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Now, starting point is zero. If production and sale is zero, then what we will have, we will have a loss, a maximum loss of 9,000. So it would approximately be over here on the diagram. So as I told you earlier that you need to refer to the cost behavior, how we used to draw, uh, how we used to present our fixed cost. So it would actually be a straight line starting from uh, an amount of 9,000 and it, this fixed cost will remain same up to 5,000 units. Even if our production and sale is zero or 5,000 units, 
this fixed cost will always remain same. This is one of the assumption. And by the way, this could also become our limitation as we discussed earlier, that the assumptions would become the limitations because actually those assumptions may not hold true. Actually, the fixed cost may change. Actually, there can be a step up increase as well. Okay. So these are the things that could even become our limitations as well. Right. Moving forward, now we need to determine our variable cost. Our variable cost per unit is uh, what $7. So if we will produce 5,000 units, our fixed cost will be 35,000. Already our fixed cost is 9,000. So if it will add 5,000 more, uh, sorry, 35,000 more to our fixed cost, our, our total cost, our total cost is equal to fixed cost of 9,000 plus our variable cost, which is uh, 35,000. So our total cost would turn up to 44,000, okay? So uh, 44,000 on the diagram, we have approximately over here, all right? Yeah. And in terms of sales or uh, produce units is also 5,000. So it means that this would extend our cost line from uh, 9,000 adding further 35,000 units, our total cost will extend up to 44,000, okay? So now this, this linear line, because our variable cost per unit is assumed to be constant, this linear line is representing our total cost as well as our variable cost. And this straight line is representing our fixed cost, which means it will remain same regardless of the change in production and sales. Now we look at the revenue. Now we need to draw our sales revenue. Our sales revenue, if we sell 5,000 units at a selling price of 10, as we said earlier, our sales revenue is going to be 50,000. So selling 5,000 units and generating a sales revenue of 50,000, it means we will be over here in terms of sales revenue, 50,000 or 5,000 units. So let's now, now the sales revenue will actually start from the origin, okay? And it will extend up to, it will extend up to 50,000. Okay, now here we need to, uh, this, this, this one, this line is representing our sales revenue. Okay, and what is the break-even point? If you remember what we discussed about the break-even point, break-even point is the point where all the cost is equal to your revenue. So when we look at the total cost and revenue, and we identify a point on the diagram where our total cost and revenue are both equal, this is our break-even point. Okay, we have earlier done this in our calculation. It was 3,000 approximately on the diagram. It would would not be exact here because I'm just using the margins approximately, but it would be 3,000, 3, okay? Now, uh, we need to also understand where do we have the profit. This area on the diagram is representing our variable cost. This much we have our fixed cost. This much on the diagram we have here is the amount of profitability. Why profit? Because after the break-even point, what happens is that this sales line, you can see, is above the total cost line. So if sales revenue is higher than the cost, it means that this area on the diagram will represent the amount of profit. And here, what is happening is that you can see here the total cost line. This is the total cost line I'm highlighting. Total cost is greater and this sales revenue line is lower. It, when the cost is high, sales is less, it means we have a loss. So this area on the diagram here, right here, it is representing our loss. This, this one is representing our loss, okay? And break-even point, if we will extend it towards your x-axis, it will give you break-even point in terms of units. If you will extend it towards y-axis, it will give you break-even point in terms of sales revenue. Same is the case with margin of safety. Margin of safety, we discuss in our calculations, it is the difference between budgeted sales, uh, which is 5,000 and the break-even sales, which is 3,000. So this is the area on the diagram, which we can declare as a margin of safety, both in terms of units and in terms of sales revenue. So this is what we have uh, as a break-even chart for single product. 
similar type of chart will be used to draw the uh, uh, break even chart for multiple products as well just the fact that you will be assuming that the production and sales is taking place in a constant mix or if in the highest ranking cs ratio then the, the pattern will not be linear the revenue and cost may be changing its direction slightly which will indicate the changes in the revenue from different products same like the case we discussed in in the profit volume chart with respect to multiple products so what you need to understand about this diagram is that you don't have to draw the diagram diagram will be there you will be asked where is the break-even point how much is the break-even in terms of units or revenue so you need to identify and point out the areas on the diagram you need to know where these areas are so that you can better uh, answer or interpret the graph which is being provided in the exam so moving forward we will now be discussing contribution break-even chart which is slightly different from the break-even chart 